One of the hardest things to achieve in programming is keeping neat, tidy, understandable source code. By breaking it down into modular sized pieces, it's often a lot easier to troubleshoot specific areas of the program and to write in upgrades. Um, if you just have a solid block of text between a do and loop command, it can be very hard to read, very hard to understand where anything is, and very hard to troubleshoot in the process. So learning how to use subroutines and functions can often mean the difference between a, a successful large game project or medium game, pro game project and a failed game project. Because one of the worst things that uh, new users can experience is frustrating game code that they wrote yet they come back to and they can't understand a day later. So to help combat this problem, we will start with a demonstration of the go sub command and then we'll move on to functions. So we'll create an infinite loop, an infinite loop here um, between do and loop and we will call forth two subroutines. So we'll type in go sub count and go sub display. Now obviously these commands don't actually exist because they haven't been written yet, but we can call them, we can create them from outside the program loop. It's always a good idea to put end after loop if that's where the program needs to terminate because if the loop doesn't break it will go on to the subroutines and cause all sorts of problems. So we'll now create our first subroutine by creating a label count, put a colon after it and it will then become the first part of a subroutine. You type in return and this is what makes it a subroutine. So when go sub goes to tap goes to count, it will go from there to there, run any instructions between that and return, and then return to where it left off and run the second go sub display command. It will then do the same, return and carry on through the loop or any additional commands you want to type in there. So for count, we're just going to type in ink x, and then we're going to create our display subroutine so display colon print x and return now this program will um, count upwards infinitely despite the commands being outside of the main program loop and when you look at the main program loop here it's easy to see what's going on you're starting the loop there um, you're then running the count command set you then run the count, sorry, the display go sub, and uh, it will continue from there on. Obviously, with these simple commands, it's not massively beneficial, but um, if you had a hundred commands in a block, then it helps to break up your main program and keep it organized. So again, we'll now um, compile our program and see it in action. As you can see, it's counting as if the commands were in the main do and loop itself. Um, the additional benefit of this is you don't even have to have these subroutines in the file, sorry, in the main program file. So we can cut all these out and we can now go to files. We can add a new source code file, call it subs.dba click on save and we now have a new source code file so we can delete all the remarks we don't need those we can then paste that in here we can go back to our main <clears throat> we can go back to our main program you'll notice it says main down here and it says include here for anything that's included and we'll compile the program and you're now working from two source codes. So you can literally keep the uh, functions and you can keep the subroutines separate from the main program to keep it neater and more understandable. As you progress in the program language and develop your own games, you will see the benefit to this a great deal. Now, personally, I should note that I don't actually use 
subroutines myself. Instead, I use functions to create customized commands uh, made up of other Dart Basic professional commands. I find it's much easier for ti uh, keeping tidy source code and uh, it's a lot more flexible. Hopefully after seeing this you'll agree. So we'll create a new loop, do and loop, and we're going to call two functions as if they're commands. And instead of a um, colon, we're going to put brackets. And then we've got display brackets. End after loop is always a good idea. And now we're going to create our functions. So function count brackets end function. So any command that's called here will then locate the function and uh, carry out any instructions between it as soon as it hits end function just like return it will return to count we'll create another one now function display now if we have a quick look at how the go sub commands looked To my way of looking at things, that just looks a bit more messy. Um, with count, it's even easier to read, and uh, it helps keep the program as module. However, there are a couple of drawbacks to it, which we'll go into in a moment. Right, so we'll do exactly the same as we did before, treating them as if they're subroutines. Ink X and print x. We'll now run the program and see what happens. Oh dear, it's not counting. What's gone wrong? Well, basically because subroutines don't work in the same way as functions, or rather functions don't work in the same way as subroutines, um, you can't simply ink x there and expect x there to be remembered because anything that occurs within a function or is declared in a function that isn't set to global will basically fail because it's considered a local variable. One way around this is to global x as integer and then run the program again. As you can see now, the numbers now work because, um, because they're declared as global, that means all parts of the program have access to that variable. You also have an alternative method of doing it. And this is one of the true advantages of functions, is the fact that you can actually pass variables to them as if they're commands. So if we now set x to equal count and we type in x there so it's passing x into count as well we will then create a temporary temporary variable in function called temp we will increase temp by one and we will pass temp back to the program and then we will put x in display and we will create a temporary variable here. We will have this as temp as well. And because it's not passing any data back to the program, you don't need to type the variable after it. So now if we click on compile, again the program will, come up, will uh, count up quite happily. The hidden advantage in um, functions is the fact that you can collapse them. So if you've got loads and loads of source code, doing this and treating them as if they're commands is very useful for keeping a project um, well-maintained, modular and easy to understand. And of course, if you want to go back and edit a command afterwards, you can then expand it and expand that, and lo and behold, you can edit the commands. You also have the other advantage that you can store them in a separate file. So if we cut these functions into the clipboard and then click on files which we're already in click on add 
um, because the last creation place of a subroutine was the go sub demo folder I then have to go into the functions folder and we're going to call it my functions click on save we can then delete all that paste that in there and we now have a dedicated file for our functions and of course if we click here and go back to the main functions source code and click on run the program continues as if they had never left the main program and of course you can pass multiple um, variables to function if we go to our functions file there and we create a couple of other variables temp2 and temp3 um, then we can use uh, we can then pass three variables to this program and uh, process them and of course uh, the usual standards apply um, if you want to pass a string variable to it you have to set it up as a string by putting the string sign after it if you wish to pass a float to it then you hit the hash key I won't go into too much detail at this point I just want to give you a basic overview of it because um, our final program will use functions quite a lot and you'll get a very good example of how they are used there but the next couple of examples are going to be fairly basic and um, won't rely on functions too much